Hey guys, I saw Bear here, and today I'm going to walk you through the basic controls, navigation, and crafting systems for the game Foxhole. So let's get started. Alright, first thing you see when you're in the menu is three options. Play, options, and exit. Each should be self-evident, but let's go over these real quick. Under options, you can fine-tune your graphical settings. If you click on keyboard, it gives you the keyboard bindings. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll keep them as the default settings, but you can adjust them at any point in the game. Now before you enter a match, it'll give you three options. You can either play as the Wardens, the Colonials, or any faction. This basically just puts you in whichever faction has the least amount of players. It tries to even the odds. So let's go ahead and join a server. Once in game, a controls menu show up. You can disregard this for now, but it's always a good reference for you when you enter the game. So let's take some time to get used to our surroundings. Standard controls are WASD to move your character around. This is pretty much the same in any game you play. Next, I'll talk about weapons. Currently, you can see in the left hand corner, I've got my fists drawn. And when I click the mouse button, my character punches. If I press 1, my character takes out his rifle. Also notice again at the top left hand corner, you can see my ammo count, but currently my rifle is unloaded. Every time you spawn in, you will have to reload your primary and secondary weapons. While you're reloading, take note of the compass in the upper right corner. Obviously, you can't reload grenades. Next, I will teach you about the character stances. There's three. Your character can either be standing, you can press C to crouch, and X to prone. Each has its advantages. The closer you are to the ground, the more concealed or covered your character is. But of course, that comes at a cost of mobility. Lastly, there is no jumping in this game. But if you press the spacebar near low objects, you can vault over them. These objects include things like jumping off the base here, as I do, small tents, material piles, sandbags, boxes, crates, anything that's low to the ground that's shorter than your character, you can pretty much fault over. There are some exceptions, however. Large metal walls, Large concrete walls and large wooden walls cannot be vaulted over unless they are placed on a steep slope or unless your character is already standing on top of a shorter object. You can swing the camera around by holding down the mouse wheel and moving your mouse left to right. Next I'll teach you about the inventory system. To open up your inventory, press the tab button. This will bring up your inventory menu. You can see that you have equipment and a backpack. In your equipment slots, you have three primary slots. Your primary weapon, which in this case is my rifle, secondary, which is my pistol in this case, and your gear slot, which is the grenade in this case. You'll also note that the hammer is fixed to the primary weapon slot. More on this later, however. Okay, one other thing about the menu. There's two extra commands you can do. You could subdivide groups of items, like ammunition or materials, and you can drop items. To subdivide, you simply press the control tab and click on an item. And to drop, you press the alt tab and click on an item. This will drop it on the ground. Essentially, this is how you'll end up trading with other players in the game. You can drop items on the ground and then have other players pick them up. To pick up an item, simply just walk over it and press E. Just be careful, if you drop items, you might not be able to get them back, or might get them stolen from the enemy. Alright, let me teach you about the crafting system. First, you have to have your hammer in your primary weapon slot, and have it out. The first building I'm going to show you about is known as the factory, or the warehouse, or storehouse, whatever people tend to call it. It's this large shed, and you'll notice four material piles outside of it. If you take your hammer, start clicking, or clicking your mouse and holding, you'll start swinging at it. This is how you gather materials in the game. You find these material piles, and you mine them as you would minerals in other games or some such. 
Each pile is worth 10 material. Players can work together to harvest materials faster. However, each player will receive less materials per pile if they are working together. These materials will be used to craft items. The first crafting station on our list is the workshop. It's this small wooden shed with a workbench inside of it. To use it, just walk up to it and press E. So here's the items you can craft at the workshop. You've got your satchel charges for blowing up enemy bases, med packs for healing yourself, binoculars for seeing longer distances, and smoke grenades for concealment. Let's try crafting a med pack now. To craft objects, you'll have to take materials you've collected and store them in the workshop first. And all players can do this, and all players can see each other put items and materials into the workshop. So be careful and make sure your team doesn't steal them. Once that's done, select on the med pack and craft away. Once you've selected an item to craft, your character can move away from the workbench that he's working at and go around collecting other materials or doing other things. The item will construct on its own, you just need to collect it at the end. If your team's in a pinch, a good idea is to start crafting items and then going to fight on the front lines, returning for them, or leaving these items for your teammates. Either way works. Just make sure you know which teammate's taking what materials. Players can work faster by stockpiling materials and crafting more items, and then divvying them out as needed. The next building I'll teach you about is the armory. It's this smaller shed with a metal roof with the two smokestacks on the side. Here you can craft things like weapons and ammo. These weapons include the SMG, the HMG, the mortars, grenades, pistols, rifles, and all the associated ammo with them. These will all come in handy later on once you need heavier firepower for taking out enemy positions and bases. One last thing about your inventory. Notice the red and white weight symbols in the right hand side of the screen. These indicate how much weight you're carrying and how much it's slowing you down. If the weight indicator is red, that means you're extremely over encumbered and you'll walk extremely slowly as a result. Sprinting won't help you here either. If the indicator is white, that means you're carrying a moderate amount of weight and you can still move around, though in combat you might still be too slow to outrun bullets. And if there's no indicator, that means you are carrying the lightest load possible and you'll be a fast sprinter. It's all about knowing how much equipment you need for the job at hand. If you're transporting goods, having a high carry weight is no problem. But if you're in combat, a lower carry weight will serve you better. If you press F1, you'll bring up the player list. Here you can command both friendly and enemy players for valor in battle, vote to kick nuisance teammates, and activate voice chat for your team. You can also see your rank and your experience in the upper portion of the menu. You'll also be able to see how many players are on each team, in case you really want to balance things out on your own. Lastly, one of your greatest friends on the battlefield is going to be the map. If you're lost or aren't sure where to go, press the M key and this will bring up the map. On the map you can see marked locations, as well as friendly and enemy bases. The Colonials have the orange star, and the Wardens have the purple triangle. Be sure you know which side you're fighting on. Oh, and of course, the orange arrow is your own character. There is also an alpha numerical grid on the map. This helps significantly with callouts to your teammates. Hopefully this tutorial has been helpful to you. Hopefully, this will keep you alive past your first few hours in the game. Just remember, work as a team, keep your head down, and stay in your foxholes. Good luck. Bear out.